Susie, we're back. We're back at it again, having another conversation. It's wonderful to see you again. So good to see you too. As always, thank you for having me. I'm yeah. excited to talk again. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Today I started thinking, man, what's another good angle to discuss about yoga? And I thought, let's talk about the business of yoga. Yeah. I've kind of been entrenched in this whole business idea of yoga. I've talked to a lot of yoga instructors. When you think about the business of yoga, yours, especially is through YouTube and monetization, but you kind of came at that a little differently when we discussed before, but what do you think about the larger business of yoga and how yoga instructors to become better business people? Yeah. Um, I think it's like pretty tough to be completely honest because especially now the market is very saturated. I mean, there's so many yoga teachers, right? So I think it can be especially like hard for newer teachers to feel like they can break into that big business um, long-term wise, um, especially if they're wanting it to be like the main um, form of income. So, or the majority of their income is coming from it, you know, like kind of like a following your passion, whether it's a dream job with yoga or not. But when I took my teacher training, we actually had like a weekend dedicated for the business of yoga. So we could like get a little more insight on like starting off and maybe like just getting a more, um, more ideas flowing other than like, you don't have to teach at a studio to make money, you know? And I think a lot of the time you can get stuck in that mindset of, I have to teach at a studio or, um, or like that's the traditional route. Right. But you just now with online content creation, it's like, if you're going to be super successful, you have to have an online presence um, so you can reach more people. So for me, it's been really interesting because it kind of just happened out of nowhere. Like I had always wanted my yoga stuff to take off, you know, and I was posting on my Instagram and whatever, but the way content creation works and algorithms and stuff like that, it'll just pick up your stuff. And that really helps like push your uh stuff into people's eyes and views whether or not it's yoga but it really is hard to like figure all that out on your own so like a lot of teachers are self-employed or independent contractors and you don't really have someone above you to give you guidance on getting your foot into the business right or maybe you start to learn a lot of things and then you apply it and you feel like it's not going the way you want and but then you can learn from that and move forward so really like when i think about the overall picture there's just so many facets to it like i know some yoga teachers that literally make a lot of money and they do retreats and that's basically right. all they do yeah so like and that's where a big money maker is at so youtube's great for passive income and it could be a full-time job for some people and um but it is very hit or miss so unless you've got like a crap ton of subscribers like even more than what i have then mm -hmm. it's hard to like fully have it be a full-time job right but there's so many avenues so i want to like mention that just so if there is like a yoga teacher that, that's listening to this that they realize like you could go so many different routes and even go a few of those routes. So you've got more than just one way of making money off of yoga. And, but there's like, there's a whole lot to it and it can be mixed with fitness. So like the marketing aspect. So, sorry, I kind of went on like a long, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> there, but yeah, I just like, you know, it starts flowing and then I just start talking. This so. is how it goes. I, I'm used <laughs> to this now, Susie. Right. I, I like that. You got a lot to say. What would you say to someone that came to you and said, hey, Susie, I see what you're doing. I see your subscribership, your videos. How can I do that? And how could they evaluate themselves to know if like they have the right presence or even this is the right thing for them to do to approach making money through something like YouTube or if you would direct them to something else, you know? So I've learned a lot about being online and in people's presence <laughs> um and you know as you know I still struggle with the whole like yeah do I want to be doing that so right away I would 
be straight up with them. Like if someone were to ask me, I would be honest with them about my experience and tell them like, it's okay if you don't know for sure if this is what you want to do. But if you have, if it keeps like coming to your mind, like you kind of get like this like pull towards it, then I say go for it. Whether or not you have 10,000 followers or 2,000 followers or 100,000, because really it comes down to the quality of your subscribers and followers. It's not so much about quantity like it is, but at the end of the day, you could have half a million people and they don't care to buy anything from you. You Mm. know what I mean? And so I would tell them it's really important to have like a niche. So for me, my niche with yoga has been linked towards like music and I really like to like free flow. So a lot of my content, especially on Instagram, which is where I first popped off and like brought a lot of traction to my business. I think a lot of people liked seeing one, the music in the background, because it like, not catches them off guard, but like, you know, I play like my old school vibes, you know, and whatever. Mm -hmm. But then I, not a lot of people were posting um, like the way that I was, I guess. So like I would post like how reels are right now, short form video. A lot of the time beforehand, it would be like a 15 or 30 second video and it's sped up of my flow but instead of like a typical traditional yoga flow it's more like dancey and flowy and you have no idea what pose i'm going to do next type of thing and i think a lot of people it's just like fun to watch right and a lot of people will be like oh i want to do that or like how long have you been practicing to get there and then when they hear I have no background in sports or flexibility and I'm able to do these things in my late twenties now. It's like, it's inspiring for people. So you got to have a niche though, because you got to stay organized. You can't just post, just post and post a bunch of random stuff. That's all related to yoga because when it comes to getting a presence online, people like consistency. So I would tell someone like, what do you have? Like, what's your vision one? Cause for me, it was, I wanted to connect music with my yoga. And so that's why I started putting vinyl in the background and kind of paired it together. But I also made sure that my background was like the same every time they're coming to my page. So when it pops up on their feed, they know that's me. You know what I mean? And people like that consistency. And so that's huge. That's something that I've noticed with any popular page. They have a very consistent look to their stuff and it's usually pretty high quality. I use an iPhone. I don't even use like my digital yeah. camera a lot of the time. So really it comes down to like having a vision. Um, one, like in general, you can't just start from nothing, right? But get a little bit of a niche and be consistent. Like those three things are kind of like major. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I mean, once you fall off with being consistent, it's hard to get back into that algorithm. So. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. So you, you mentioned about the yoga teacher training and some version of business within that. Yeah. What, what are a lot of these trainings about business for, let's say, yoga for this instance? What are they missing in the training that would help someone getting into the business? It's actually a really great question. I'm trying to think back. Because this was like 2018, I think, yeah. like certification, and it took like nine months. But um, we touched a lot on like ways you can make money that really didn't deal with social media, mm-hmm. like at all. And so I like when my page like did start to get traction, that was something I have completely had to figure out on my own. And I have enough drive to want to beat that algorithm and get the traction and share my practice, but it is still discouraging sometimes too, when you're creating content and then you don't get the views and traction or whatever. So, because there's a lot that goes into promoting yourself on social media and the marketing behind it. And if you don't have a background on that, then it's hard to figure it out. So I really think just because of how things are now taking place after COVID, that talking more about online promotion and staying authentic and like knowing what audience you are trying to reach because you can't please everyone, you know? Um, I wish that I would have learned a little bit more about that 
And I think I would not be shocked if teacher trainings now do add in a little bit more of the social media into it. Um, it's been a bit since I've obviously done a long training like that. I do other education ones that are more specific. So like stuff with like yin yoga, for instance, which mm-hmm. doesn't touch on the business aspect. But I really think people need to realize that you you don't have to be like in person at a yoga studio to make money. And I also think people need to be realistic though too, because in my teacher training, I remember, you know, they talked about you could go and host retreats. You could even go to like nice resorts like hotels and they could give you a free place to stay and you teach classes or go on a cruise ship. And those are very, it's realistic, but it's also like, only so many people can do those things, right? Yeah. You really got to put yourself out there. So I just I say that too, to just, cause I remember when I heard that, I was like, Oh my God, that's what I want to do. <laughs> and it's like, I'm a new teacher and you can't just like, you can't attempt to go right into it. You know what I mean? But obviously they're probably going to look for someone who's a little more seasoned. I will say working at a studio is a good thing. It's just very hard to make a living off of. So um, I miss the, in-person aspect and the group, you know, aspect of it, but it just wasn't working for me. So that's why I just want, I just feel like when it comes to the business side, like I think they should be like just more honest about that too. You know what I mean? Yes. They shouldn't be, I don't know. And I don't think every teacher training does this, right? It's very situational on who's saying it and who's teaching you, but it's like, literally 90% of teachers are not going to make a living off of teaching at a yoga studio. And you're not going to want to spread yourself so thin that you're teaching 20 plus classes in a week. So that's, that is really something that, I mean, I don't know if it's like against the, like their business to be like, Oh, by the way, you probably won't make a lot of money teaching at a <laughs> 40 hours a week, but think it's good to be like honest with people and like just to like be realistic so maybe word it in a different way right but um it's just it's like I said in the beginning it's saturated so it's already hard enough and I think people just need to like (laughs) be mindful and realistic about the options that are available yeah I think it's also as I've hired a lot of yoga instructors throughout my time and like at gyms and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's so difficult for yoga instructors to survive right. uh, that way. So it ends up becoming this kind of hobbyist thing where you teach a few classes and then you have like your insurance job, that's yeah. your main job or your real estate agent or whatever. And I think that's so good that the business of yoga is expanded to online because then you could actually do what you actually want to do yep. and not do these other things because, well, I had to have a steady income. Exactly. for that. So I think that's there. We need to tell the truth. And this happens yeah. in fitness as well. It's like, it's great to be all into fitness, but if there's no way to make money regularly, it's kind of pointless. Right. You have yeah. to live, you know, exactly. <laughs> and you know, personal trainers probably run into the same mm-hmm. type of situation, you know, unless you are working at a gym and you have a base pay on Mm -hmm. top of like your clients that you're booking, then it is really hard. And most gyms and places don't hire employees as personal trainers and teachers. It's independent contractors. So there's no benefits. And um, so of course you're going to want to have another side job. It's funny you bring that up actually, or say that just because like, you know, I took the leap of faith to go all in on my business in like 2021. And I'm at the point now where I've built it up enough to where I still have enough traction and people that I'm making good money, but it is at the point where like, I do want like other income, you know what I mean? Like now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I kind of do want to get back into having another part-time job, maybe full-time one day and have yoga become again, more of like my hobby and passion rather than just straight up my full-time job. Um, It'll always be something that I teach probably like and be there, but it's just, it's just really hard being a content creator. Really. It's stressful. (laughs) So, and I I love it, but man, it is like so hard to stay like, 
consistent with the income. So yeah. until like that gets super consistent to where it's like, you know, you're good. Even then I still would probably eventually be like, okay, I want another job though, because I've always been that way. Yeah. Um, it's really easy to get burnt out if this is all you're doing. And, you know, they always say like, turn your passion into work. You'll never work a day in your life, but they don't realize like, the dark side to that is like you can also get really burnt out and then end up mm. your passion and, and then that makes you feel like a whole that's a whole other topic but it is a whole other like, topic yep. it's like you know that just and that sucks like that's not a good feeling and then you're gonna be sitting there like oh my god like it, did i do the wrong thing so that's another thing i think people trying to get into yoga and other teachers that are already doing this um so just be mindful because I've been burnt out before and I took like a six month break off of yoga and yeah. was like, like freaking out a little bit. Cause it's like, I put so much energy and money and effort and then to not want to even step on my mat. It was, it's a weird feeling, you know, but it has came back my passion for it. So <clears throat> it's just one of those things now where I'm like, I almost miss having like my job that makes me money and then sharing yoga because I want to not straight up because I have to, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. No, it makes a lot of sense. It's uh, the whole business of anything around wellness. It's an awesome conversation because yeah. there's lots of pathways. Like take for myself, I've been a trainer for 23 years and I'm more of the exception. Like I have had a very full, continuous, full-time training career my entire time. Yeah. And I exist in live virtual format for training exclusively at this point and I don't have to do anything else. That's very rare. And right. so all of my other content creation is just for my own passion. It has nothing to do with my revenue for living. I've right. already got that. Yeah. So, but it, but you know, if you're just a trainer or a yoga instructor and you're starting out, it's very difficult to make content, your creation, your main thing immediately, you know? I Especially just because everyone's just doing it. Everyone's you know? doing it. I worry about yeah. that, Susie. Like, what's the <laughs> optimization point where uh, there's so much saturation where only a few people can actually make good money? In we're doing getting to creation. the point where you will hear other influencers and content creators say this. Um, I've heard it a couple times now, but it is usually like in like a YouTube video where they're talking about this or like on an Instagram story. So it's like, you actually have to watch like what they're posting. Right. Um, and like listen to the conversation. <laughs> um, some people, you know, their attention spans are like five yeah. seconds in and then they're gone. So, yeah. um, I like people will say like, you know, there's too many influencers because all of us are reaching out to these companies and they can't send <laughs> us all free stuff to promote. Like they're going to be losing money at that point. Right. And so it's hard when you're new or you've been trying to like start fresh or switch up or whatever it is. Um, it gets really hard just because like, why wouldn't someone want that to be their job? Right. right? It's like, it's very not easy, but it's more fun. And, um, I do worry though, just because like not everyone can do this. Like we do need people that are like, I'm not going to say in real jobs because <laughs> it's a real job, but like <laughs> you get what I mean. It's yes. like, we still need people that do the day-to-day -day work. We don't, we don't, we don't have AI running everything. You guys, no. like, I understand you might think that's going to happen. And if it does, okay, but we're not there right now. Yeah. So um, like I, I joke sometimes with people. I'm like, Oh my God, everyone just wants to be a YouTuber. We're going to have like no doctors and lawyers and plumbers. And those are the ones that matter. And I feel weird saying something like that though. Cause I'm a part of that. Like I am a YouTuber. So, yeah. um, but I also, I also have worked in other jobs though. I feel like the younger generation, they're just going straight in. To straight in. Yeah. And it's yep. like, that's what they're growing up with. So you can't even blame them, but I just want them to be realistic. Cause in my mind, I've always been, it's a possibility, but even if I make it like that, I'm not going to fully bank on it. Cause yeah. you just know. And if you, um, 
and even if I did like fully bank on it, I just know like one day when I'm like 50, I might not want to be online. You know what I mean? Right. So I just think long term wise. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people are thinking long term. <laughs> So, yes, this uh, is true. Actually, I'll tell you, I had Joel Green on recently. He's the director of Nike uh, camps for youths. Yeah. And he said that the majority of kids in these camps is for sports camps and stuff. He asked them, like, do you want to be professional athletes, blah, blah, blah. You know, the work. No, they all want to be YouTubers. All of them. And they said the outcome is not important to them. Generally, it's just what happens now? Can I go viral now? Like the outcome of becoming a better athlete is not even the main goal anymore. Or let's say being a great yoga instructor may not even be the outcome. It's just to be viral. To that's, get the very, that's hard because like that's for, hard. That's hard to like for people that are actually wanting to be better yoga teachers personal trainers, content creators of whatever they are creating content for, because then the people that are saturating it with that mindset, that's not authentic. And I mean, I will say, I think I've mentioned this in a previous video that when we were talking is like a lot of the times people eventually can tell if you're authentic or not. It's also really hard to tell sometimes. So, um, but I do think people can feel like if they like feel like you're just selling shit to them yeah. or you are just doing crazy things to go viral and um and I don't even think that's inherently bad like for instance you know the youtuber Mr. Beast he does right. crazy yeah. stuff to he make does. his yeah. stuff go viral his stuff is so cool though because it's so off the top that it's yeah. like you would have never thought of and he gives back that you know he's yeah. so authentic because he does not give a shit about keeping all of the revenue and he's so transparent oh, about he it. doesn't even like being rich he's like no I don't like, like this. he's like I i'm don't... a regular guy over yeah. here yeah <laughs> he's like no way <laughs> yeah so um i really like him i don't even watch yeah. his stuff i've only watched a few things but i've watched podcasts where they've had yeah. him on and to hear like his like story and just like his mindset behind things. I'm like, okay, you're a good guy. <laughs> yeah, we need more yeah. of you out here. That's um, right. We need more of those type of YouTubers. If we're well, he got in early too, like really early in YouTube. So he didn't even know like whether it would be become, in. you know, it's like now like, everybody knows. It's kind of like that yoga with Adrian chick. Like, she yes, got it earlier, yes, right? yes. Those few people, it's like they've got so many subscribers because they really got in when YouTube was starting to pop off. Yeah. Um, that worries me, though, to hear that what you just it's told true. me. true. Telling you. It's like, like, I'm sorry, but it's like, then leave. Like, if you don't want to be at this training for, like, what we're doing, like, what it should be for, then let the next person that yeah. actually wants. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think it that way because it sounds kind of harsh but at the same time I'm like you're kind of taking someone's spot that like maybe actually could learn and maybe yeah. actually be like a professional athlete and I think that's a wonderful thing to go after you know yeah. and great achievement um I'm not gonna talk shit about being a YouTuber though either so <laughs> yeah right you're I, like you know, <laughs> it's just hard because I feel like I like I'm a little older than like Gen Z. Yeah. You know? so, like, I actually was in the workplace and I understand work ethic. And I also understand, yeah, you can go viral, but going viral three times is not going to pay your bills. Yeah. Like forever. It'll pay two months worth if that. <laughs> <laughs> like, so it's like you really, I don't know. And it's also like you can go viral and not make any money. So true. like Instagram, like I purposely do not make money on Instagram. They've offered the little reels bonus thing mm -hmm. that pops up. I've never accepted it because I read on Reddit like a while ago that if you accept it, they like kill your engagement because it's like, yeah, you're making money, but and they're making money, but they like don't want to pay you almost oh. even if they're making money it's weird it's like you're hmm. a lot of people's engagement gets killed once they start subscriptions or start the reels bonus and it kind yeah. of makes sense like in a way but at the same time it's like where's the incentive here now some yeah. people 
I've had success, but I've just seen so many people say, like, the second I turn that shit on, things have been shitty, and then they turn it off and things go back to, like, how it was. So I'm like, yeah. you know what? I'm going to mess with it. Plus, Instagram I like to use as more as, like, marketing my stuff, like, not worry so much about making money off of it. But my point is you can literally go so viral on there or TikTok and only make a couple hundred bucks. That's and crazy. It's that's not enough. I don't know why people are so like <laughs> eager to go viral for no good reason. The reason I would want to go viral is to get more customers to then subscribe yeah. to my paid services. Yeah. Like that would that's the main goal for people like me. But and they don't have an actual product though, like to be selling other than posting whatever they are. Like if yeah. they don't have like a subscription or an actual physical thing, then it is hard to like uh, like what do you well, how are you gonna make money you know what i mean yeah Unless you got or whatever which is already hard enough not every company can sponsor all of us so right <laughs> <laughs> right like um i mean i don't even have any sponsorships and yeah. part of that is like I think a lot of the time people reach out to companies too i just haven't really reached out because yeah. i'm like there's not one. There's a couple companies I would like to be sponsored by, but you know, I'm also like, I feel like it's very nichey with certain stuff. So if mm. you're going to be sponsored by certain uh, brands, they want you to like only post like them or like like let's take for instance if you're promoted or sponsored by a clothing brand, a lot of the time, especially if it's like gym or yoga wear, they will only want you to post their stuff. Um, right posting athletic wear versus like and that's usually how a lot of them will go but a lot of them will be like you know it's fine you can like partner with other people but yeah. i know a few of the bigger brands are like that and you'll see on people's pages that's like all they're posting is just that brand and promoting it um they'll wear other stuff but they won't promote those brands yeah yeah so um but yeah this is just it's just so funny i have cousins that are younger and they are very similar in the oh, whole. Yeah. oh yeah <laughs> and yeah. i'm always looking at them like you guys be realistic um because, or have plan b here at least have a plan b that's that's my best advice is at least have a plan b <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, because also too i i worry about people who's like just only want to do this coming out the shoot because yeah. they don't like know what the future of this holds but too like I don't know. Imagine like if you were just online from the get go in your work life and you never had these other interactions, then you're also in some ways kind of a slave to the Internet and it's to weird. constantly being online, which we know is not very healthy for people. Right. And it's kind of like you're missing out. I'm all for people doing what they feel like they want to do. That's fine. But there, there's a trapping, like you said, a dark side that people aren't talking about. Other thing, I also think it's just people aren't talking about the actual monetary gain or not gain from this stuff. They just yeah. see somebody with a lot of subscribers and go, they must be making a lot of money. Yeah. You know, I want that. But nobody talks about the actual money to, uh, and yeah. these things. And they should do that. So I'm going to be completely like transparent. I probably won't put a money figure on it just to yeah. like, you know, yeah. but... Um, it's interesting because, like, you would think since I have 260,000 subscribers mm -hmm. on YouTube, then I have 120,000 together with between my two mm -hmm. Instagram accounts. That's a lot of people. You would think that by looking at my pages, like, I'm rich <laughs> because yeah, of sure. numbers, but like, I am not rich. <laughs> <laughs> I am not um, rich. <laughs> in fact, like this year I've made less money than what I ever have the last two years. And part of that is because I think YouTube has done some weird stuff with like their mm. ad revenue for this year. I don't know. I think at the beginning of each year, they kind of uh, decide what they want to spend their money towards. And I don't know if yoga is like lower on the list right now or what, mm. but um I also know that they've invested more into shorts and I don't post shorts because yeah. you don't make money on them. So right. uh, 
I'm not going to post something, get a hundred thousand views and then make a dollar. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to post a longer video where there's more ad revenue. But anyway, um, I just, I don't know. I feel like people need to realize subscriber count and follower count do not equal dollar signs. They can like, like, yes, the more exposure you have, the more chances you have of someone resonating with your content and then wanting to subscribe or like with me, then they want to practice with me. Right. But also when you go viral, literally 99% of those people are not going to go then buy your stuff. They may follow you, that's it now and that's fine because it is still support but people need to realize like i'm not making money off of every 260,000 person right. that is subscribed to my youtube channel like you can create memberships on there for instance but a lot of my views on my channel do come from my subscribers but majority come from outside people. That's right. So people that aren't even subscribed to my channel. So they see it on their little trending algorithm. They click it. They watch me. They subscribe. They keep freaking going. You yep. know? And that's <laughs> normal. Like I do that when I'm scrolling. And mm -hmm. then I, it, it's like you can't blame them. But I really wish people would just say this. Like people that are like in my position. Mm -hmm. Be like, hey, like, yes, I've made a lot of money, but yeah, I've also made not a lot of money. Like, yeah. it's very yeah. up and down. So, like, there have been months where I make fifteen thousand on YouTube. Right. There's also right. been months where I make two grand. So yeah. it's like, there's even been months where I make a thousand, and I'm like, what is going on? You're like, whoa, I need this. Come yeah, on. Yeah, like... and I'm like, what's going? On? And that's why I said earlier, like, unless you have like a like half million subscribers, it's yeah. really hard to be it's really hard to rely on it fully. So even yeah. with the amount of people I have on my page, um, it's hard to maintain a full on income. And I think a lot of those people though, that like don't realize this, but they want to be in this position. They will then, if they ever get into that position where they do get a following, it's going to be a shock <laughs> because if they're not like realizing it, you know? And I mean, even for me, when I, when I first started getting more followers and stuff on Instagram and YouTube, like I even thought right away, like, Oh, I'm going to make a lot of money. But yeah. then you realize how the breakdown is, how ad revenue works. And then you still got to pay taxes. So that's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> that's exactly this, right. You still got to pay taxes guys. <laughs> so, like, don't forget that. Um, that's something I don't think a lot of content creators or wannabe content creators like yeah. think about. And that's something that really can take a hit. Like at the end of the year when you got to do your taxes and you're owing 10, 10 grand and you didn't put anything. <laughs> together, but you're then like, oh, shit. And then yep. act, like, act like that happens. And then you have two months in a row of your revenue being low then you're gonna be real stressed out you yes. know what i mean so yes. i do think it's something that people if they want to get into it absolutely i just wish you know it'd be really cool if we could somehow this is gonna be so funny to say if we could somehow have a way to vet like who really is authentic on mm. here who's not because i so many people are so tired of the bullshit you know what i that's mean that's right when you, have, when you see someone actually be real and authentic it is so refreshing. It is. You know? And it's kind of sad that we're at that point. So yeah. um, I don't know. I hope, I also hope that more people, because I do think a lot of people feel this way and I hope more people are more outspoken, like how we are about it. And maybe that can like start the conversation yep. um, because I, I think a lot of people are going to get to that point too. Even if they're not there right now, they might eventually be like, dang, like, it's just too much online. Like I have a lot of friends that are like, I don't even want to be on social media because it's of just, course, you know? Yeah. So it's just down your throat 24 seven, 24 so. seven. And honestly, most of the people in over 600 plus interviews, I would say 95% of the people are like, I hate social media. <sighs> like they don't want it. <laughs> and I actually think you can only optimize something so much. 
to yeah. where it becomes detrimental. And I think we're at this inflection point where you're going to start getting people going, I would rather be in real life, actually. We, um, I have friends that are like that. Absolutely. I mean, and I have told you before, like, I even get jealous of them sometimes yeah. <laughs> because, like, we'll be hanging out or we'll be on vacation or doing something. And then I'm trying to go get content while they're yeah. just hanging out and chilling. There's been times where I literally will be like, screw my content. Like, yeah. I, whatever. And I know that means I'm taking a kick to my revenue mm -hmm. and I'll have to get that video another time. Right. Um, it has happened so many times though, over the last two years where I've just realized, like, I want to like, not have to fully rely on taking photos and pictures mm -hmm. and like the photos and pictures, the same freaking thing, but videos. <laughs> um, and I, like it's a fine line right like yes it's great that we can make money off of it but at the same time it should not be everything it should not be your whole life like we're already on computers probably for work and then exactly. you go off work and then you're on your phone consuming mm -hmm. everything or you're watching netflix and <laughs> it's just a lot <laughs> like it's screens lot. everywhere and i do i mean i have friends that are like they literally like deleted their Instagrams, Facebook. If they got back on Instagram, it's literally like random and just to update like their friends or if they have a profile, it's private and they only let a few people in because it's like they don't care to show the world. Yep. Like they just want to have their little photo album that they can look back on, you yeah. know? Um, but so I do think we're going to have more and more of that as well. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the younger generation does with everything because most of them are online. Um, I think a lot of them, yeah, they do want to make money off of being a content creator, but a lot of them are just like kind of watching all of this too. Yeah, that's true. And but I don't think that's healthy either. <laughs> right. So I think they can, a lot of them can get very envious or wonder like, why can't I do that? Or I can't do that. Wish I yeah. could do that. And um, I mean, being a content creator is very vulnerable. Like you really yeah. are putting yourself out there and not everyone wants to do that, which is. And that's totally okay. Fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. We're not and letting people be that, make it a fine thing. And that's why I think like yeah. you said, this is not, if you have so many people aspiring for the same thing, the world cannot hold all these people to do the same thing. And companies will make decisions to change that. Yeah. They will so raise, I, right. They will raise their, their criteria. That, at that's some what's going to happen. I think we will start having, I think people will start pushing more towards the jobs that are like needed. Like we need doctors, nurses, mm -hmm. carpenters, plumbers, electricians, mm -hmm. whatever. We need that, but they need to pay more. They need That's to right. have more incentive for people because until that happens, people are not going to do that. Like right. they're going to continue doing whatever they're doing until it's more beneficial to do something else. Um, another thing that I was told is a lot of people will like make fun of you if you have like a regular nine to five. What? <laughs> younger, not like, not like my age and above, but it's yeah. like really for the younger generation, like, like you're around people and they're like, oh, what do you do? And you're not a fucking YouTuber and you're not oh. a content creator, but you maybe work at a fast food place. Yeah. Like that's where you work. And it's kind of like insulting. Um, and wow. I can see that though. I could totally see why people would be judgmental um, it, by you having a quote unquote normal job. <laughs> um, and it's almost like, like it's lame. You know what I mean? Like Man. that's the vibe. Now I do think it's a maturity aspect. Like yeah. in that, younger high school early college mindset and then once they hit the real world they realize oh shit it's hard like <laughs> it's hard, hard man <laughs> it is hard out here uh, yeah but i i think it's really hard between like 18 to 22 <laughs> that's that age where you think you know everything yeah yeah just, like you got a lot of energy and <laughs> just i don't know i just feel like 
so many people, including myself, look back and they're like, oh my God, like I didn't know anything. Like no. I didn't no. know a damn thing. But you really think, you know, you turn 18 and you're an adult. <laughs> you're an adult now. I know. Yeah. That. Yeah. In age, you're an adult. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> really well. <though. laughs> it's a shame though, because like these are jobs that we, Someone has to do these jobs. These jobs are needed. I understand that AI will probably take over some of these jobs and some extent they have, but listen, you need people power in a lot of places yeah. and we should, we need to make these jobs less stigmatized as being bad jobs or that yeah. they're beneath you. Like we, someone had, there's a place for everyone and not everyone is going to be like a viral YouTube creator. And we need to stop telling people that, that, oh yeah, that's your, you should be able to do that. It's like, there's people out there who just don't want to do that either. Like, right. and they don't need to be pushed into doing something that they actually don't want to do, you know? No. And I do think too, like, we just need more incentives for people to yeah. want to not like, we need more incentives for people with the like normal day-to-day -day jobs, whatever, yeah. but honestly, just all jobs. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, we need more incentives because otherwise it's more appealing to attempt to be a content creator for yeah. a lot of people. A lot of people yeah. are like, Oh, hell no, I will never. And they know themselves and they know like that is not the route. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, there's just so many people that, they have the thought process of I'm already posting online. Why not try to make money off of it? You know? Yeah. And if they don't have an incentive, which is going to be monetarily most likely, or at least is going to be a part of the pie of incentives, then you can't expect people to want to go to school for two years to get a certificate or associate's degree to then help towards whatever, um, a job they are trying to get into yeah. because that's something that I realized too. Like I actually was looking at like part-time jobs recently just to see like what was listed because like I said, like I am at the point where like love yoga, you know, whatever, but I also want multiple streams of income. And since yeah. I'm at the point where it's like, okay, let's add another <laughs> on. Mm -hmm. um, I, since I'm self-employed, like my resume just has me, when you, it says yoga instructor, yeah. I think most people are going to look at that and not think that's transferable in a lot of ways, yeah. unless it's a job that is yoga teaching or at a gym or something of that. And then that's, of course, the first thing listed because I still do that. And then all my right. other beneath it's like because it's like you know people will look at a but there's like a kind of like a gap in my resume technically even though I'm running my own business but it's one of those things where you're looking at all these um, job openings and a lot of them require certifications um, or a degree which I've already known this right. but it's like specific things you know like it's not just need a bachelor's degree it'll be things that are like preferably or required to have two years in IT or whatever, because that's the route that we're going yeah. is like all the jobs that are going to be really high in demand that are outside of, you know, the typical ones that we already know are going to be more related to the internet and online, but you have to have experience somehow you can't just get your foot into the door without some certificate or degree or something. And that's something that I've been running into. Cause it's like, I already went to school and I don't want to go back. <laughs> um, but I already know since the world's changing, it's one of those things where you kind of have to learn the new things that are going to be running businesses, yeah. especially if you want to get a job that is like, sustainable that isn't healthcare or a lawyer right. or a doctor, you know, like the typical ones. Um, I just keep seeing stuff about IT and cybersecurity, like popping up, like on yeah. Twitter. And it's because like the whole AI stuff and just mm -hmm. everyone's online. Um, but those are really hard to get into and they're competitive. And it's just one of those things where it's like, I think so many people also think they can just jump in and do yeah. those. Um, and 
I don't know. It's like, I just wish more people, I guess, felt better about going after jobs like that um, and didn't feel the need to have to go viral to like have a yeah. good job or like to be happy with their job. Because that's like the vibe I get is like content creation seems like the the way to work from home and live your dream life. <laughs> not it's like that's so like not realistic no (laughs) no no it's like you said the pressure to create content even when you're not like you're doing just recreational things and things like there's this dark side that i think especially really young people they just think oh it's all good i'm just gonna be on here make a lot of money travel the world it's like yeah but it's not that easy i mean come on (laughs) it's it's only that easy for like five percent if that <laughs> like, like literally like you know you'll see those uh travel pages where yeah. like every reel is just somewhere amazing and they are just showing like all the videos of them yeah. being there. those people a lot of the time will take a shit ton of content when they go to this place and then they will make like five different reels of that one place because that's the business way yeah but it then the way they post it though it can make you think like oh my god they're traveling all the time and going (laughs) to all these places and they are going to these places like don't get me wrong but and you can't even hate on it because like i said that's the business aspect to it like you know of course like that's smart for them to do um but On the consumer side, though, it's so easily misinterpreted (laughs) into a, oh, my God, dream lifestyle. And some of them are living like a dream lifestyle. But a lot of those people already had money to help get them to that place, too. Like, it costs money to be a content creator. You got to buy shit. (laughs) Yes. Share with the world, you know especially if you're not sponsored and even if you get sponsored it's not by every brand it's just by like one and then you know like you don't have people that are like sponsored by amazon and they get all their amazon shit free no they have amazon storefronts that they make a little commission off of but they're not getting paid to like you know post and buy things or getting free stuff all the time uh not from amazon at least so yeah yeah be other brands but amazon is like we don't need your promotion <laughs> yeah they're like we definitely don't need you <laughs> like, we, do, we don't need to give you free shit we're good people um, are buying no matter what yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> but i mean it'll be interesting how things go within the next like five to ten years because so yes. much has happened within five years with content creation right now that I mean, I even now can feel like, and you mentioned it, just things are so saturated and like too much. And it's almost like, it's just overwhelming. Like you're, you're taking in so much stuff to the point where you're like, I can't even like remember that I saved these five recipes that I said yeah. I was going to try out that I end up never doing because I'm so overwhelmed with all the other content that I just saved as well. That you might forget. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, and I think that's like very common. <laughs> I was just talking about this the other day. It was, it was like, in the past, it was like about seeking. You couldn't find a lot of content because there wasn't a lot out there in the early yeah. 2000s. Now there's an overwhelming amount and it's yeah. like filtering through. But the hard part about filtering is that you get distracted on the way to filtering. The yeah. Things. Oh my God. So you're just distracted and getting nothing done. I'm like, you get distracted and then you have, you get distracted by something else that you have to filter through. It's <laughs> right. like rabbit hole, you know? And it's like, oh my God, there's, that's happened to me so many times. <laughs> or like, I save recipes all the time or like outfits. And then I literally never buy the outfit or try mm-hmm. the recipe. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I literally have so <laughs> many things saved. And it takes up space up here, though. You know what I mean? Like, even though I haven't gone to go do those recipes, I still, in my mind, have been like, oh, I saved that recipe. Maybe I'll get to it one day, you know? And, like, it's very, it's just a lot. I wonder, like, if maybe there'll be a drop-off of, like, content creators, you know? Yeah. And then maybe it'll even out but like who knows because i do think this is just kind of the natural order of things it's like it's kind of new to do con- 
content creation and make a lot of money off of it. The whole short form video. Yeah. Definitely newer. Um, and of course there's going to be a spike, you know, but <laughs> it is kind of like it, we're getting to the point where people like me, even that have a lot of traction already are struggling to make money because it's yeah. so saturated. I mean, man. there's so many yoga teachers on YouTube. <laughs> there sure is, man. When uh, I was looking know. for yoga instructors a while back for the month, I was like, golly, this is a crazy amount of people. But, it's like a crazy there, amount. There's a lot of good quality content. And it's yeah. like, there's a lot of like, not that great, or maybe not what you're looking for too. But like, it's so much. And people know how to put in the right keywords for you to yeah. then it'll pop up in your search results, even though it probably shouldn't even been in your search results, just because <laughs> they have that one word in their freaking title. Cause they yeah. know, <laughs> they know. Yeah. Which is just the whole business aspect to it, but it'll be, I wonder what the breaking point will be. For There's going to be a breaking point. <laughs> There's no doubt about it because the companies will not continue to just keep paying out all these money no. to all these people. They'll go, well, we'll give it to certain people. And I feel like they'll just raise the criteria. They'll go, okay, we're going to make it harder for you to get to this point. Because it's not a sustainable business model for a company to keep yeah. paying all these people. You're right. Absolutely. I do think that they should up the requirements anyway. Sure. Um, I don't think that any and every TikToker should be promoting leggings. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just... <laughs> the other thing, though, too, is you can like buy stuff make a TikTok or reel about it and just share your knowledge and then still make money though, because there's, there are ways where you can like, for instance, my little like link that I use in my bio, it's called like Zazam. Mm -hmm. Technically, if I get on there, I can, they have a section that says brand collabs. If I click that, it says like, you can make 15 cents per click through like Target, for instance. Yeah. So if you go to Target, you click on it and it'll say, grab a product that you want to share. So even if you haven't bought the damn thing, you could then be like, oh, buy this awesome pillow from Target. Yeah. <laughs> and if someone clicks on that link, you could revenue 15 cents for that. So that's where it's going to be hard for that section or sector to be controlled yeah. because people are going to share whatever without being sponsored. But when it comes to the real money and sponsorships and actually like living off of content creation, I don't think everyone should be able to like yeah. do it. So I, I do all, I personally think they should up the requirements. Um, yeah. I don't even think a lot of people know what the requirements are, you know, cause each company is different and they're not just public with it. So that's right. Um, you kind of got to reach out and say something, but I don't know. I just, it's almost stressful thinking about it. I'm kind of like, <laughs> I, I want to see what the breaking point will be and yeah. like what, because it'll happen and we'll be here yeah. to see it so and remember this conversation everyone <laughs> this is a, there is there's a it's coming it's just um, any business that gets oversaturated and uh it's kind of like everyone trying to be a professional soccer pa player or everyone trying to be it it's not for everyone not everyone's going to be a great content creator making all this money but we're socializing people into thinking hey you could be a youtuber you can make this money and all that, it's just, we gotta be realistic with it. So I think that's a big part of this conversation too, but gotta end this. You always get going, Susie, it's amazing. I <laughs> yeah, I think you always have great points because you're honest, you're a very honest person. Thank you. Yes. I try my best, I really, I've told multiple people that I, I really wanna come off as authentic as I can through these yes. phones yeah. and computer screens because that's like really what we need and we should want in general, so. Yes, most definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time and uh, I look forward to the next time for sure. Yeah, I'm super excited for our next convo. This one was really fun to talk about. Um, thank you again for having me today. Thanks, Susie. Bye. Bye.